There is a war brewing in the AFL, not on the field with clubs or players, but off it. Two media figures who have a history of little back and forths are once again taking shots at each other. SEN, Channel 9 and the Age's Kane Corns and the Herald Sun's chief football writer and Fox Footy's very own Mark Robinson. You could say it is the Battle of the Titans. So what triggered Mark Robinson to fire at Corns and how did the volcano respond against his arch media enemy? Well this latest battle started on the Sunday footy show. If you don't know, what caught my eye is a big segment on the show in which all the panellists essentially try to make fun of each other. I must admit it's normally very funny and has been home to many classic moments such as TJ trying to kiss Beck Judd, Matthew Lloyd doing weird things as a young player and Nathan Brown's questionable English skills. But it's all done in good spirit and normally between those in the studio, but not one Sunday. Kane Corns aimed his what caught my eye at three-time Richmond Premiership captain Trent Cotchen, a new member of the revived Talking Footy. So what did Cotchen do? Well, take a look for yourself. I'm going to run through a little bit about what isn't quite working for the Pies, but also how good Sydney are going with regards to their team defence and their contest wins. So in this example, we see Collingwood held up in the middle of the ground. Obviously... Now I must admit, it is a little goofy and awkward looking, but it is an attempt at a social media type of quick analysis. It doesn't look that professional, and I'm sure the green screen could have been done a bit better, but it wasn't aired on Channel 7, and it's just part of an add-on for the show. However, Corns couldn't hold back. What I saw this week was, I, I was actually jealous of how they are at the cutting edge of anal um, analytics. Let's, let's have a look at Trent Cotchen. Hey guys, Trent Cotchen here. We're going to run through a little bit about what isn't quite working for the Pies, but also how good Sydney are going with regards to their team defence and their contest wins. So in this example, we see Collingwood held up in the middle of the ground. Obviously, typically they like to go fast, but they're trying to control possession. You see Robottom uh, at the top of the screen, just in a position where you can see both his direct opponent, the threat in front of him, and the kicker. And then in the right time, he actually pushes away, uh, comes through, impacts the ball, and then they get their offence going uh, with speed on the ball. And it would have resulted in a goal had they not exploited each other. So I want the best product here. Okay. That, I, that is, I, I, want the, I want us to be at the cutting edge and I want us to be the best. <laughs> and Sorry, it's a blatant rip-off, but I just had to go there. Hi, guys. Uh, Kane <laughs> Corns here. I just wanted to show you what isn't working for Hawthorne at the moment. Um, so let's take a look at the vision. In this example, you can see James Sicily with the football and he kicks it to his teammate who marks it. His teammate then doesn't quite know what to do, so he decides to kick it to his teammate who marks it as well. While Corns clearly let loose and to the giggles in the background of the others, it was a hit. On YouTube, the clip has well over 50,000 views and 700 likes. People did find the clip funny, but one man was not too happy. The start of Mark Robinson's Herald Sun article is positive. Kane Corns wears many hats in the media as an inquisitive, insightful and thorough football analyst. It's a great compliment, but it's too bad one sentence later, Corns is said to be wearing the class clown hat, and it fits perfectly. Out of nowhere, Robbo launched a kind of moral stance against Corns. He didn't go all the way calling him a complete idiot, but did say the teasing of Cotchen was a cheap laugh at somebody's expense, and it's a form of bullying. I wonder how Cotchen feels about all of this. Two things can be true here. Cotchen is relatively new to the media world, and like most people who embark on any TV career, the start will be difficult. So in some ways, he deserves a bit of a break. But that video was average, and when you're in the public domain, you leave yourself open to criticism, just like I do on this channel. Robinson himself said in the article, Seven's rebooted show Talking Footy, which is hosted by James Brayshaw, and has Cotchen, Joel Selwood, and Tim Watson as panel members, is a work in progress. It is far more analytical, and thus not as lively and bouncy as a Sunday footy show. And being what, 10 shows old, it's trying to find its comfortable groove. 
So maybe the established Channel 9 show and the Volcano are bullying the upstart Channel 7 show and newbie Cochin. Or maybe it is harmless fun. It was suggested by Robbo that Lloyd, Brown, TJ and Barrett apologise. Those same people will likely say hello to Cochin next time they see him at the footy and act all friendly and innocent without their sniggering gang, of course. They should apologise to Cochin instead. Well, how did Channel 9 respond to the criticism of one of their stars? Predictably, Corns took things into his own hands. We don't apologise. Well, well, okay, everyone, no, don't no, apologise no. on our behalf. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> We're not, I'm not apologising. It says apology on here. Uh, this is absolutely... This is you. This is absolutely not an apology. But I thought it was important <laughs> that we address the events of last week. And I look, I wanted to do it properly. So I came in early and... and oh, no. Hi, guys. Kane Corns here again. I just wanted to address this week's controversy. Now, I can't point to it, but as you can see here behind me, Trent did a video, then I did a video, and then Richo got all upset about the video. I always strive to be at the cutting edge, but the volcano is always bubbling, and sometimes people get burned. So join me next week as we continue to set the agenda with important topics like this. Oh, so right. is that clear it up? Like, is it, is oh, that, is yeah. That a classic smart aleck response. He even went a step further as the audio sounded worse and even more of his body was cut out by the background. Clearly he didn't take a step back and although he didn't mention Robinson, Matthew Richardson, who was the other media figure to dismiss Corns, caught his attention. Robinson almost predicted this response as in the original video making fun of Cochin, he said, maybe Corns just felt like being a smart ass. In hindsight, that is glaringly obvious. This is just the latest stoush between the two, with both taking aim at each other for years now. In 2020, Mark Robinson labelled the AFLW untouchable when COVID cutbacks came to keep the game alive. Corns wasn't a fan, calling him out on footy classified. It's the most ridiculous article I've read during the coronavirus period. The first two paragraphs, they are the untouchables, and so they should be in this time of crisis. We are talking about female footballers and the pioneering AFLW competition. In the same year, Corns debated Mark Robinson's official top 50 list and said there was a Victorian bias when selecting the players. They are only a couple of small incidents, but beneath the surface, both men have had eyes on each other for some time. Because of who they work for, they are natural rivals. If not, why would Robbo bother writing an article for an incident that he wasn't involved in whatsoever? He did his research too, and his closing point for Corns was an interesting one. Let's hope Corns' 17-year-old son Eddie, who has launched his own sports podcast, as revealed in the Adelaide's advertiser, is spared the same sort of ridicule. Good luck to the lad by the way. Despite the old man letting himself down this time, Eddie is fortunate to have big shoes to follow. It feels like this isn't the end of the media wars in the AFL. It's silly to see two such senior AFL commentators battle it out, but it is funny. At the end of the day for us, it's another form of entertainment and another chapter in the rivalry between Kane Corns and Mark Robinson.